Hello, this is Jeff Johnson, creator of Weathermaker. I just released Weathermaker 5 with lots of new goodies, and one of those is performance profiles. In Weathermaker 5, the folder structure has Weathermaker Prefab Profiles Performance. These mostly map to Unity quality levels, and I've also added a 4K and some VR profile. Let's show you how these work. When you run your game, it'll auto populate the performance profile property on the Weathermaker script, and this replaces all other performance properties that used to be on this script. There used to be enable fog lights and some precipitation collision properties. These have all been moved into performance profiles. If you set your own performance profile, then the auto population and quality level mappings will not apply. Your profile will be used. So let's look at this profile. We have cloud options, precipitation, fog, reflections, and a tone map option. And there may be more options in the future. Please send me requests if you want other options in here that I didn't think of. So the cl volumetric clouds can be turned on and off here. That's new in Weathermaker 5. We've got a down sampling scale for volumetric clouds. We've got temporal reprojection, which spreads rendering over multiple frames. I highly suggest you watch the temporal reprojection tutorial video to learn more about that. The clouds also have a weather map, which you'll see here. I'll just go ahead and turn on some volumetric clouds so you can see a weather map. So this is a bunch of noise functions and various other things that come together to generate a weather map that shows the clouds in the sky. So basically your camera is right in the center here and then this is the sky. If I do maybe some bigger clouds you'll kind of see it makes it okay there it looks maybe makes a little more sense to you all these blips here are potential clouds they're not actual clouds because the algorithm doesn't just map one of these pixels to a cloud it does some other things so this is basically just potential for clouds anyway that's all discussed in the volumetric cloud tutorial video which is not covered here so go ahead and watch that video to learn more about these volumetric clouds you can also change the Raymarch sample count, level of detail, start and end for the volumetric clouds. The volumetric clouds have a sun mapping here, so you can see as the sun moves through the sky, the clouds will shadow. Um, if I move over to this side, you can maybe see it a little better. There we go. So as the sun moves, you can see the shadows on the clouds change. That's what this sample count here is. If you lower that, the clouds will lose that shadowing or it will increase in quality. But this also means more ray marching through a noise texture, so more performance. We've also got a full screen sun shaft effect here. So let's you can see as the sun's moving here, you can see those sun rays moving around. And then, of course, if you turn that off, then you don't get that at all. And then, of course, you can lower that, but then the quality level of those sun shafts will not be quite as good. You might get a little bit of banding, so it's up to you to decide where you want those levels. I've tried to make sensible defaults for each quality level. All right, the precipitation properties you should be pretty familiar with. Uh, we've got enable collisions, which is turned off for everything by default, but let's go ahead and turn it on and you can see the little splashes now but that uses up a little bit of CPU so if you if you're not really into that and I, I think most people probably won't need that I mean we've got this animated texture down here with puddles so you may just not need that all right let's turn that rain off okay so let's move on to fog we've got full resolution fog the fog is a lot more performant than the cloud so Full resolution with no temporal reprojection should work just fine. Um, as you can go down in quality levels, you can probably go half resolution fog, but like I said, you don't need to go much lower than that. The fog renders pretty fast. The one exception is if you have a low end device, you'll probably want to turn off the enable fog lights. And I think I've done that on some of these lower profiles, like the simple profile doesn't have fog lights. And these, all, and these profiles don't have any fog settings at all. There's no lights or sun shafts or anything. So, all right, let's go back here. Um, these 
full screen sun shafts are just like the clouds. They kind of have the sun shine directly through the fog. Uh, the fog noise sample count is how many ray marches through the fog if fog noise is turned on. This is pretty fast, but for lower profiles you'll probably want to lower this or set it to zero. And then the fog can also sample shadows, so let's turn on some fog. I'll go ahead and turn these clouds off. So let's see if we can show you the fog shadowing. So I don't know if you can see that, but you've got kind of some fog shadowing going on there around this big circle thing in the center. And so that's kind of a nice effect. Even when the sun's not visible, you can see those. So those are different than the full screen sun shafts. But again, that requires some shadow texture lookups. And on older devices, you probably don't want to have that and turn that to zero. Again, that's turned to zero on some of these simpler profiles. All right, reflections. So we've got options in reflections to turn off reflection probes. We've got a reflection texture size. So if this is set to 127, then it just uses the default. And then, actually, no, if it's 127, it's turned off. On Fantastic, we have a 1 megabyte reflection texture. So in the water here, you can see that. Let's turn on some clouds so you can see the reflection better. There we go. So on, on smaller levels here, your reflections aren't going to look quite as good. Okay, and then we've got reflection shadows, which I saw no reason to make soft shadows in the reflection because it's just a reflection. It's going to be blurry anyway, and nobody cares. So I thought, why bother with soft shadows there? And then we've got tone mapping. So if you're using the post-processing stack and you've got that filmic tone mapping option turned on, you might consider turning this tone map option off. But if you're not using that, you probably want to leave that on. If we turn that tone mapping option off, things get a little more washed out in the clouds, a little brighter. We'll turn off the fog so it shines through a little bit more. So that's pretty bright and probably not quite the effect you want with the clouds. So if you're not using the post-processing stack, I highly suggest you leave tone map on. And then consider turning it off if you're doing a tone map post-process. Okay. Um, you can easily make your own profiles if you find that these aren't quite the, uh, customized the way you like. And then obviously please send me any emails to support at digitalruby.com if I missed any performance settings that you think might be useful. Mm -hmm. And then of course please watch the temporal reprojection tutorial and of course the new volumetric cloud tutorial which is the very helpful for these volumetric clouds because they have a lot of options. So. Thanks for so much for watching. Uh, I hope you all enjoy the new WeatherMaker 5. And again, please send me any emails with questions or feedback. Thanks so much. Bye.